Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're out here in beautiful Panama City, Florida, and we're gonna be talking about bungee dock lines. We had a company named Boat Lines and Dock Ties reach out to us and uh, wanted us to sample some of their bungee dock lines. At first, I was a little skeptical, but I eventually said, you know what, send me a few samples and we'll do a review, put it out on YouTube and we'll see what people think. There are a lot of opinions about this product uh, because purists that have done this for a long time are really kind of set in their ways on just good old standard dock lines. And sometimes the new is a little unnerving for people. So today we're gonna see uh, in this video what we think about it, first impressions. Uh, kind of go through a couple things we've observed and maybe we'll come back to this in a few weeks here and uh, give you our kind of follow on. So let's take a look. So yesterday afternoon about this time, uh, we set this boat up here. This is Yamaha's 222 FSH. We set this boat up with four dock lines uh, on the four corners, intentionally not crisscrossing. We wanted to just kind of set it up like maybe a beginner would do. We feel like this product might appeal to someone who's never had a boat before. Maybe they're willing to try something new. So we just simply connected the front corners out to each of these dock pilings you see here. Uh, and then we put our GoPro out and we set it up to time lapse and we recorded for 24 hours. And luckily last night we had a really good fall about two and a half foot of difference in our tide change. So we started relatively low tide, we came up, came back down, and now we're kind of back up a little bit. We have three different configurations set up here. Uh, the first is the one nearest to the camera. This is a adjustable. Um, so some of the questions I had was, what if I have a dock piling here in the Gulf Coast? We see a lot of dock pilings that are really large diameter pilings. We're talking about 10, 12 inch dock piles. But in other parts of the country, they have dock piles that are six and eight inch diameter. And I thought, well, it's gonna be kind of difficult for people to get their mind around a simple loop end uh, when they've got these different variations on dock piles. So this configurable is really nice. It's got a stainless steel cam. Uh, it lets you kind of adjust to the size that you wanna to adjust to. If you feel like you need a little extra security, you can even tie a little hitch uh, right here in the end. So if you're concerned about it slipping, this is uh, just like attaching a, a ratchet strap uh, to a, a load in the back of your truck. It's really super durable stuff. It's the same kind of material actually that you see used for ratchet straps. So as strong or stronger than traditional dock lines. Another cool thing I like about the, uh, the material is it's covering or concealing that bungee. So the sun is not going to harm the bungee. It's not gonna degrade the bungee over time. So I really like that a lot. Over on this side, we have just a standard two loop. Uh, and I asked the question when we first started talking with the people from Boat Lines and Dock Ties, I asked them, what if I need to adjust the length? Um, because I have a loop on both ends, what do you do? And they said what they found has been best, tie off to the boat cleat, just using the standard method through the center, out over the ends there and make it secure. But coming back to the dock, the easiest way is to simply just wrap it around like you see here to adjust the length. So we just wrap it a couple of turns. See how we're just wrapping it? So that kind of worked out nice. That was easy to do. Plenty of tension. This one is uh, called a hook and loop. So on the end, they have a loop on that end. I simply just made a big loop, threw it over the piling, came back here, and then on my hook end, I passed the hook through the cleat and then back to a little eyelet that's actually sewed into the material. So it makes for a, another way that it can be done. It gives you some variation. So if you've got a specific need, those three methods are how they do it. They have the two loop, they have the hook and loop, and they have the adjustable. So how did it do for our boat? We wanna take a moment to thank Boat Lines and Dock Ties for sending us the sample product. So they've been great to work with thus far. We also wanna make mention, they did not pay us for this review. We wanted to really get your opinion on this. What do you think about it? That's why this video is being made. Let's get back to the video. Some observations from kind of watching it last night and even through today. When we set these lines in place, I kind of built in a little tension when the tide was low. That way when the tide comes up, I felt like some of that tension would be released, but it still would have some pull. We noticed when the tide was coming up that the boat stayed kind of in the center of the slip here. It didn't tend to wander around because the lines weren't slack. They still had tension. So they all kind of pulled against one another and kind of kept the boat right where we wanted it, which is really great. Um, there are some that have said that this type of uh, line is not great for use in 
uh, storms or in bad weather, if you're going to have high winds. Um, and I guess because a lot of people have not tested that over time, maybe there's some unsure um, feelings about that. For what I can tell thus far, comparing the load bearing capabilities of this kind of line versus a traditional nylon line, I'd say this is as strong or stronger than any conventional uh, boat line we've tested in the same range. Just call it a 3 8 inch diameter, so kind of comparing like for like. I would say that the, it's every bit as strong. The method of how you tie it, I guess maybe there could be some concerns there. Are they concerned with the stitches or how they kind of manufacture those loops? That's yet to be determined. So in our follow-on video, maybe we can talk about that some. And with time, we'll determine whether or not these things are going to last and be strong enough to withstand some of the Florida storms that we see. Another question I had for the manufacturer was when we put a load on this bungee line here, when I really pull on it, how far does it stretch before it kind of gets to its working end there? And they told us roughly about 30, 35%. So a 10 foot line like this would actually increase to about 13 feet. So one thing that we haven't talked about a lot on this channel, but is very important is PWCs. How do you tie your PWC to your dock or to your, uh, wherever you're kind of moored? Uh, I really like some of these options that they have for the hook and loop. You know, you, this connects to a traditional cleat and this connects to either a toe point on the back of the front or somewhere on the ski that has just that simple little eyelet type connection. Makes it really easy. Most PWCs that I've seen do not have a traditional um, cleat, so it's kind of hard to tie to them at times. So that makes it really easy. You can get these in various lengths. I'm showing you roughly a three footer here. They've got a couple different colors available. We can talk about that later. They also have a couple different configurations. So you could do the, the double loop like this if you like. Uh, so thinking about PwC guys, I think it's great. They're very lightweight, light duty. So these are a perfect fit for that. Something else we didn't show connected to the boat, but for people that are concerned about heavy duty, this end configuration here, they're using a really nice stainless steel. This is uh, basically just a, a step above their traditional carabiner and just ultra heavy duty. I'd say probably uh, five sixteenths diameter uh, stainless steel here. Uh, just if you're going to have really harsh weather and you want to tie up really securely, this is great. Uh, these lengths are also variable, so you can get them in all kinds of variations in length, starting at around three or four feet, all the way up to 15, 20, 25 foot lines. They make them custom. Uh, so um, what are your thoughts? We want to know what you think about bungee dock lines. We want to know if this is something that you'd be interested in, uh, maybe something that you've had experience already. Just type in the comments below. Let us know what you think. Should we bring them into the store? Is this something we should put our name on? We appreciate you watching this video today. We hope it was helpful to you. If you like this video, check this one out.